This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, do you have any tips for creating cables and wires in precise locations? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have the ZBrush searchlight here loaded in. And the question is asking about generating cables and wires. So as an example, let's say I want to draw a wire from this part here and have it go all the way to the back over here. So are there any workflows or processes that can be used to generate these in a precise fashion? So the primary method for creating wires on models is to use an IMM brush with the curve mode active. So an example of this, I have a wire brush here selected. And if I go to my stroke palette here and open this up and go to the curve area, you can see that curve mode is turned on. So with this IMM brush, if I come across my mesh, and if I just click and drag, I'm going to start drawing a curve out. Now after I release, this is going to now generate a mesh across that curve. Now with this mesh being drawn across this curve, the curve is still active. So I can come in and click and drag on this curve, and I can start manipulating it, to kind of change how this is being affected around my mesh. Now this process can sometimes take a while, especially if you want to line the curves up in specific areas on your mesh. So if you want to move this down here and then maybe move this over here, you can see that this process may take a bit of time. So another process you can use is you can generate a mesh and then have the curve follow that mesh. And then after that curve has been drawn across that mesh, you can then apply the IMM curve brush to that curve. So an example of this, let me just undo this, get back to where I was originally. And instead of drawing a curve out this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to append in a Z-Sphere object. So I'm going to go to the Subtool Palette over here. I'm going to go and click on Append. And from the Quick Pick menu here, I'm going to select the Z-Sphere. And this will now append a new Z-Sphere to my scene. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of my Subtool Palette and then select that Z-Sphere. And then turn off Perspective and zoom out a little bit. And you'll see I now have a Z-Sphere sitting directly in my model. So with the Z-Sphere being appended now, what I need to do is I just want to scale the Z-Sphere down to be the size of the wire that I want to generate. And then I want to place it where I want that wire to start from. So I'm going to switch to the Scale option here at the top. And I'm just going to scale the Z-Sphere down. I'm going to turn on Transparency so I can see this. I'm going to scale it down. Then I'm going to switch to move, and I'm just going to move it to where I want it to start from. You can zoom in a little bit here, scale it down a little bit more, because I want it to just be the size of this part here. I'm going to rotate it to the side and move it out from the interior surface here. So switching back to move, moving it up here, and just making sure that that Z-sphere is about right there. So now I've just taken that Z-sphere that I've appended and I've scaled it down and then I've repositioned it so it's at the location of where I want the wire to start from. Now after I have this created, I can switch to solo here quick and turn off transparency. I now want to start drawing some more Z-spheres from this. So I'm going to switch to draw mode. I'm going to switch to a smaller draw size here. And then I'm going to come across the surface here and I'm going to simply click and hold. And while holding, I'm going to press shift and this is now going to generate this effect. So this is adding a new Z-sphere to my existing Z-sphere, and it's capturing the size of the original Z-sphere. So these two Z-spheres here should now be the same size. So now I can switch back to move and move this out a little bit here, and then get out of solo. And now if I rotate around, I'm getting something like this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Z-sphere, and now I can manipulate the Z-spheres to how I want this wire to run. So I can switch back to draw, and then I can add a new Z-sphere here and go back to move. I can start manipulating this Z-sphere here and just reposition it around my mesh. So let's make this wire a little bit tricky. Let's have it running underneath through here like this. And I can just add another Z-sphere by switching back to draw, switching back to move. So I can move these and then draw another one. And then move it. So I can funnel my wire through here, do something like this. And the process for manipulating the Z-spheres is simply just drawing and moving. So you can stretch out to the extent, you switch to draw, you can then add a Z-sphere in the middle of the chain there, and then you can go back to move and you can start moving this around. So I'm just going to move these Z-spheres and just rotate my model and just start positioning these Z-spheres where I want this wire to be. 
So this process can take a little bit of time depending on how complex you want your wires to be, but this is going to give you a really nice and exact result. So I'm just gonna go through and speed up this process as I draw the rest of these E-series here and establish a nice smooth line. So now after I've completed that, I now have this nice Z-sphere wire through here. And by using the Z-spheres, you can control how they flow through your mesh here. So you can see you can have them go up and over, around things, in between things. So you have a lot of flexibility and control when using this process. So now after you have your Z-sphere mesh created, we now just need to turn this into an adaptive skin. So I'm gonna go to the tool palette over here. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna open up the adaptive skin area. In here, I'm gonna set my DynaMesh resolution down to zero, and I'm gonna change my density to one, and then click Preview or press A on my keyboard. Now, after you do this process and I turn on my polyframes here, you can see this is the result I'm getting. And as you'll notice, the topology here is spread evenly across the entire area. So this even spread of topology makes using Z-spheres really nice for generating wires and other things on your meshes. So now after I have this generated, I now just need to come back to the adaptive skin area under the tool palette and then click make adaptive skin. And this is now going to generate a new tool at the top here. So now if I select that tool, you can see this is the result I am getting here. And now I just need to append this back into my original scene. So I'm gonna go and select my original searchlight again. I'm gonna go back to the subtool palette here. I'm gonna go to the append option here, click this. And then in the quick pick menu here, I'm gonna select the skin that was just generated. And this should now append it to my scene. I can hide my Z-sphere here and now simply select the adaptive skin subtool. So now with the adaptive skin subtool selected, there's a few things we need to do now to modify this mesh. So I'm gonna activate solo here and zoom in a little bit. First thing I wanna do is give this one single polygroup. So to do this, I'm gonna press Control plus W on my keyboard. That's gonna give this an entire single polygroup. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna trim off the ends of my adaptive skin here. So I just want this to be a cylinder and I don't want this tapered end. So to do this, I'm gonna hold down Control and Shift to get the select rectangle brush. I'm gonna drag this out across the, the end of the mesh here. I'm gonna hold down Alt and that's just going to hide those polygons there. And I'm gonna do this for both ends of the wire. So that top area and then this bottom area. So coming across, dragging out, holding Control and Shift pressing Alt to turn the selection box red, and then releasing, and that will hide that area. Now after those parts are hidden, I now just need to do a delete hidden. So I'm gonna go back to the tool palette. I'm gonna go to the geometry tab, and then I'm gonna go to modify topology, and now I'm gonna click delete hidden. And now that should have removed those hidden parts of the mesh there. And now I just have the mesh with those end caps trimmed off. So now the next thing I need to do is I wanna assign some more polygroups to this mesh here. And to do this, I'm gonna use the Z Modeler brush. So I'm going to just zoom in a little bit here. And then I'm gonna navigate the brush palette over here and open this up. I'm gonna locate the Z Modeler brush here. With the Z Modeler brush selected, I'm gonna hover over one of the edges here. I'm gonna press spacebar to go in the Z Modeler edge action menu. I'm gonna find the action of polygroup and make sure my target is polyloop. And I'm just come across one of these and click, and I'm just gonna tap Alt to give it a more vibrant color here. So I've just added a new polygroup to one of the edge loops. And I'm gonna locate another edge loop right next to it and click and assign a different polygroup. So now I have this polygroup that's going all the way around that edge loop. I have this polygroup going around that edge loop. And then I have my other polygroup, which has the rest of the topology. So now that I have my mesh here broken into these three polygroups. I just need to hide my original polygroup here. So I'm gonna hold down Control and Shift again, make sure I have that select rectangle brush selected. I'm gonna click on one of the vertices of that polygroup. This is now going to isolate it. And then clicking again will hide it. And now I should just have the two polygroups visible across my mesh. Now I go back to the geometry tab here and do a delete hidden. And that is now going to delete everything but these two edge loops here with those different polygroups. Now that I have my mesh like this, I can now use the frame mesh option and this will generate a curve between the poly group division. So I'm gonna navigate up here to the stroke palette and open this up. I'm gonna open up curve functions area. And then in here, you can see there's this large frame mesh button. 
I want to turn off border and creased edges. And I want to make sure I just have polygroups turned on. And now I can click frame mesh. And you'll see that I'm going to get a curve drawn along the polygroup division of that mesh. So now I've just generated a curve across that area. So now if I get out a solo, you can see I have something like this. So I have that single-sided mesh that consists of those two poly loops. And now I have a curve running all the way down it. So now that I have this curve running down it, now I can go and just select an IMM curve brush and then simply click on this curve. And it's going to take that curve brush and it's going to follow this curve that I generated. So now I go back to my brush palette over here. I'm going to select that wires tool again. And I'm just going to click on this curve here. And you'll see that my wires are now going to follow that exact position on that curve. Now you will notice that this isn't fully matching where I had it originally. And this is because of the depth setting that the IMM curve brush currently has. So I can undo this to get back to just my curve there and go back to the brush palette up here and go to the depth area. And in here you can see my embed value is set to 91. So this would allow me to draw this insert mesh curve on a surface and it would stick right on the surface. So I want it to go entirely into the surface, which is going to match how I originally drew out those z-spheres. So I'm gonna change my embed value to the negative number in which it currently is. So I'm gonna change it from 91 to negative 91 and hit enter. And now if I come across and click on this curve, and now it's gonna take that and apply it to the curve and you can see instead of it sticking out, it's now getting closer to where I want it to be. Now you will have to play with your draw size sum when using this to make sure that it fits perfectly in that area. So this is still a little bit too small. So I'm gonna undo this, up my draw size to say 24, and then click on that curve again. So that's getting a little better there. So let's go up one more time. Let's go to say 28, and then click on that. So there we go, that looks pretty good. Going all the way through the mesh there, and it looks like it's fitting those two end caps there. I can now get rid of the extra geometry here, so I can get rid of the curve. So I can go to the stroke menu here, and go to the curve function area and click delete, which will delete the curve. And then I can go back to the subtool palette and then I can go to split. And I can now do split unmasked points, which will now split off the initial z-sphere topology that I modified. And now I will just have a new subtool that just consists of that curve. So here we have that nice curve and it's flowing all the way through the mesh like so. So this process is really handy, especially for doing complex wiring on meshes. So you just append a z-sphere to your scene, then you manipulate that z-sphere to generate the effect of where you want that wire to go. And then you convert that to an adaptive skin. You set up some polygrouping to allow you to establish a curve line through the edge loops of that mesh. And then after that curve, is generated, you can take any insert mesh brush and apply it to that curve and you're gonna get that exact result you're looking for. So now if you had an IMM brush as well, set up with some nice polygroups. If I turn on my polyframes here and turn off line, you can see I have these nice polygroups that were created with this IMM brush as well. You can now modify these with move and use the mask by polygroup function. So if I switch to say the move brush here, and then go to the brush palette, and then go down here to the auto masking and turn mask by polygroups on. I can now come in with a large draw size here and click and drag on these polygroups and I can now start fraying some of these wires too. So maybe they're not as bunched up all the way through the cord here. So maybe only they bunch up at the ends and you can start seeing how you can start playing with all these things inside a ZBrush and get some really interesting results on your meshes. So I hope that helps. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.